y'all. So this episode of Greenleaf was giving what it was giving. So let's give it what we got. So the episode starts off with Lady May going to visit Pastor Patty down to Atlanta. She gets to Atlanta and then it's revealed that she wants to start her own church. Oh girl, you was right. I just came to tell you you was right. I should have went to divinity school instead of being with bitch. And basically Patty was like, bitch, how about you start your own church? Right at the church you already at, bitch. Take over May. That's actually what she said. Take over May. Take over Calvary and basically boot his ass about the church and then you take over. Boom, cat, Patty wet. And you could see on Lady May's face, she was just like, mm. Now, the rest of the episode was pretty much the round table party. So, let's just run through it. When we first hear about the round table party, people are getting ready for it. You have Jacob and Carissa discussing boot camp for Zora. Honestly and truly, y'all, I was waiting this whole entire episode for the daddy or the mama to beat the dog shit out of Zora. I understand that white folks watch this show, but bitch... As a black person, we know how to get our kids in order. Beat her ass. That's all she needs is a good ass whooping. All this, oh, 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 she's coming off. Oh, don't you talk. Oh, no. Slap that hoe in her motherfucking mouth. Oh, Lord Jesus. Yeah, I don't understand. Don't act like because y'all got money in a mansion, bitch. Y'all don't understand how y'all was brought up. And then we move over to Bishop and Lady May. Lady May some kind of way got a hold of the invitee list and was like, bitch, why you inviting all these people knowing we in the situation we in? And basically he told her, bitch, I'm trying to fake it till I make it. We trying to get this money up out of Clara, bitch. We need to smooth it over and put the icing thick on this motherfucking cake, okay? And so one of the people that he invited was the man that actually introduced Lady May and Bishop. And when he got there, Bishop was like, listen, this is my last opportunity. You are my last opportunity to try to salvage this motherfucking relationship. Like, we are bursting at the seams, and I am praying that you being here can kind of remind her of how we got together and why we got together. Hallelujah. But Lady May said, oh, bitch, oh, no. Hell no, I'm done with your ass, and I'm done with the games you're trying to play. Bitch, I'm done, and I meant what I said. As a matter of fact, Korean, come up in here. Upgrade all the flowers. Upgrade everything. I want this to be spectacular because this is going to be the last time I party with your motherfucking ass. And then the round table party begins. Bitch, before they can get to the groove, Kevin and Aaron, I got his name, y'all. Ray Campbell's son. Kevin and Aaron showed up because Kevin was like, bitch, you were supposed to be leaving the sun here with me. You got all pissed because you found out Aaron was moving in, Charity. You took our baby and then you fucking left. And I don't know where the fuck you are. You've been gone for over a week and now I'm fucking concerned. You claim you at the motherfucking tour. You claim you with Jabari. But bitch, when I got in touch with Jabari, your ass was nowhere to be found. So needless to say, he shows up to the green leaf estate and is like, bitch, where the fuck is Charity? I don't give a fuck about this round table. I didn't dress for the occasion. I came to, actually I did. I came dressed to go to the motherfucking wall, bitch. Where is my kid? Grace is like, bitch, I don't know where the fuck she is. She said she was on tour, so that's where she's supposed to be. So let's go ahead and call her because I'm trying to defuse this shit, bitch. Grace, you on your business. You did your thing with that newsletter because I've been hearing great things. And bitch, you are defusing left and right. You should have defused that fight. We'll get into it later. So she called Charity or whatever, and Charity's like, bitch, I'm on tour. Grace's like, now, nah, bitch, we already got in touch with Jabari. That ain't the case. So where the fuck you at? And I'm T. Cobb. I'm taking care of bitch. No, bitch, you ain't. You actually in your feelings, and you trying to drink your problems away and just run away from your goddamn issues. Of course, she don't want to talk to Kevin. So Kevin's like, okay, bitch, you want to play? Grace, I'm finna put them laws in her motherfucking life because I can't take this shit no more. Grace, like, oh no, oh no, please give it a week, give it a week, please give it a week. I don't think he gave it a week because at the end of the episode, but we'll get into it. Then they have a little announcement or whatever that Bishop wants to make, and he basically pours his heart out to Lady May. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. She tearing up. And I actually thought she was gonna be like, okay, we can work this out, but no. He poured his heart out on the floor, and baby, she dipped her chicken nuggets in it and was like, mmm, salty. And as he was wrapping it up, you see Rochelle appear out of nowhere. And she looking at them like, mm -hmm, bitch, I got y'all caught. I know what y'all doing. I know what y'all trying to pull up. And both of them looking like, bitch, what the fuck you doing here? Because Bishop had just told her he needed space. And we already know she and Lady May don't get along. So, bitch, what you doing in my house at my round table party? Lady May's like, what the fuck is she doing here? Bishop like, I don't know. I'm going to handle it. You need to handle it. You need to do it now. I said, oh, Lord Jesus. I'm thinking you wifely. Like, okay. 
But bitch, she pulled a book Valentine. And here is how. Bishop had walked up to Rochelle and was like, bitch, what the fuck you doing here? Uh, I'm just here because da, 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 the whole church is here. He like, bitch, I already told you I needed space. I need you to kick rocks. Poof, la boo. Now I'm in love with you, bitch. If I let you on and I gave you the wrong message, sorry, bitch, it ain't happening. Bye bye Mama was out here, well, fine. Oh, well, fine. I guess I could just leave. So after she left or whatever, Bishop walks up to Lady May. I did what you asked for. We good now. That hoe said, why are you talking to me? <laughs> I told your bitch ass we was done. Just like Brooke on Love & Hip Hop Hollywood. Work up with your ex bitch and then I'ma leave your ass standing. Poof! And Rochelle, Lord, she can't leave no place in good standing. The bitch just gotta rip some up. She gotta stir some motherfucking gumbo before she leave the goddamn premises. So as she leaving, she see Clara. She's like, wait a minute, can I talk to you for a second? Claire was already talking, bitch. So that was your saving grace right there. She said, no, 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 man. I need to pull you away because I need to ruin the Greenleafs at any fucking cost. I told y'all this. She talks to Clara, exactly how are you tied up with the Greenleafs? What's going on? Oh, I forgot to mention that Rochelle had told Clara, hey, Clara, you should donate to Grace's organization down to the church. Clara was like, bitch, I'm already tied up with Calvary Sally. No, thank you. Moving back to where I was at. Rochelle like, so bitch, how you tied up with Calvary? Wanted to know the tea. And I thought Clara was going to tell her, but Clara was like, I can't say. <laughs> I can't say, bitch, I'm not at liberty. So Rochelle said, bitch, okay, I'm not going to stop until I get enough. Oh, I just wanted to know because if I was your financial advisor, I would tell you to look over your books and make sure you were protected. And I keep telling y'all that Rochelle tells people exactly what she wants them to know, but it seems like she's telling them in another way. She told Clara to be protected because she literally meant, protect yourself, bitch. I'm about to take them down. And I honestly don't want to take you down either. But bitch, you're going to be collateral damage because I'm not going to stop and I'm not going to have no consideration. So you better make sure you protect her. She wasn't talking about her finances. She was talking about her period. Okay. And honestly, that shit worked because when the party was wrapping up, Clara was like, oh yeah, about the money. <laughs> I'm going to have my money, people. Sit down with you and I and Bishop, and we're gonna get everything together. Baby Lady May face was cracked. She was crushed. But she played it off. Side note, I did not know that Corinne, the secretary, was Clara's granddaughter. That's how you got that job. But I still love you, girl. You see that bitch. Zora and Sophia talk, and Zora lies to Sophia about the money. Oh, uh, that was just extra birthday money. Yeah, da, 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 da. Nah, bitch, you stole it. So then Sophia and her boyfriend decide to take a walk or whatever, and Zora decides she wants to hang back. Now, I'm thinking Zora finna go through these bitches' purses and start stealing money, but no, 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 no. She wants to hop on that computer so she can talk to Isaiah. Meanwhile, while that's going on, Sophia and her dude in the car just stargazing and listening to music, and they get to kissing. Regular teenage couple. Bitch, she go to finger her, and she like, bitch, I'm not, mm -mm. what's going on? I don't want to do this. He's like, I'll just call you. I think that was a turning point in his life. He's a Christian, but he's a dude. And at some point, he ain't gonna wanna hold out no more. His dick gonna get too hard, and he gonna wanna go for it. So, Sophia, baby, I applaud you for wanting to stay absent until marriage. But, baby, unless you dating a pastor or a minister, and even then, girl, you are treading a thin line. Girl, you gonna be single. <laughs> Cause these men want the nookie. Y'all, I have to touch on this conversation between Miss Connie, two-piece Tanya, and Grace. Connie was like, oh, was Kevin here? Oh, cause I was gonna talk to him. Grace like, bitch, what did you want to talk to Kevin about? Oh, I wanted to know why he still wasn't at church. And that's when Grace was like, bitch, if the church is more inclusive and y'all let gays, lesbians, and transgender people in the church and welcome them with open arms, maybe he would still be coming to church. Ow. Now, he said he couldn't come. Oh, bitch, all these semantics that you got going on, she was the typical black church, bitch. We ain't say y'all ain't welcome, but bitch, y'all energy says all of that. All of it. So, poo. Clara was like, oh, I'm so, no. Clara started looking at her funny. And Grace was like, what's up? Like, why are you looking at me like that? Because I want to know when you're going to stop agitating and trying to root for all the underdogs, everybody except for Jesus. Grace said, bitch, all the underdogs is Jesus. Your same Bible said that Jesus hung with the least of these. That means everybody you passing up on the street, everybody who you judging, everybody who you don't want to come to your church, that's who Jesus was kicking it with. 
Dark skinned Amber Rose, aka Carissa, and Jacob discuss Lady May taking Zora in because earlier in the episode, Lady May had caught Jacob and Carissa kind of having some little tension. And she was like, Jacob, what the fuck is going on? I'm your mama. I know something's going on. You need to tell me. And that's when he told her about the stealing and all that shit. Lady May was like, let her just come and stay with me. I can keep the kids in line, bitch. I kept you and Grace in line, bitch. So, blah, blah, blah. And Jacob was like, okay, I like that over the boot camp idea. So when he brought it up to Carissa, she was like, no, hell the fuck no. No, 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 no. You know what? I'm ready to go. Let me go get my purse and let me go get my kids. Bitch, when she went to go get her kids, she ran in on something that she wasn't looking for. So Sophia and Zora was in Sophia's room talking or whatever. And Sophia discovered that the reason why Zora wanted to hang back was so she can get on the computer, like I said, and talk to Isaiah. So they get to arguing and Zora just goes left. Zora starts cussing this girl out, talking about her. Oh, you are embarrassing You stop fucking howling. I hate you. Da, 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 da. And they get to fighting. Bitch, let me tell y'all something. Baby, just because somebody is a Christian, don't make them a punk. People can love the Lord, serve him with a whole heart, and still beat a motherfucking mud hole in your ass. So let not your heart be troubled, and let your burdens be light, honey. It can happen for your ass. So just as they get it started, Carissa walks in. Uh uh, what? Break it up! Break it up! What the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going on? And so she grabs Zora. Zora snatch away. She grabs you. Uh uh, that was the perfect opportunity, dark skin Amber Rose, for you to knock a motherfucking knot in her motherfucking head. All right, <laughs> all right, girl. At that point, boot camp would have been where her ass would have been going. Not Lady May. She ended up staying with Lady May, but bitch, please, please. Your ass would've got fire tied to your ass and shipped off to Oregon. Then once the party is over, we get back to the church and Connie, two-piece Sonya had walked in and was like, listen, bitch, the IRS motherfucking shit is hitting the fan and it's all over the news and your daddy and mama is being sprayed. So if they go down, you the next up. How you feel about that? Grace is like, whoa, 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 bitch. I preached one sermon in three seasons. I, I, I don't know. Like, give me a minute to process. Now, while she processing, <laughs> Charity is over wherever the fuck she is singing, I will survive. Hey, hey. Like, just really give her all she can give. But, baby, I don't think you should have been singing, I will survive. <laughs> you should have been singing, I'm a fugitive. Hey, hey. Because right when you wrapped the song up, the police officers was like, Charity, <laughs> can you come with us? And that's how the episode ends, baby. Kevin was not playing. You don't bring me my motherfucking son, bitch. I'm causing a loss on your ass. Hallelujah. Y'all, I can't wait for next week's episode. I need to figure out what's going down. So now that Bishop then broke up with Rochelle, Mama got a motherfucking vengeance. She got a motherfucking stick of her ass, and I feel like she is going to push his plan further in motion because now she ain't got shit to lose. You want to be against me, Bishop? Fuck all y'all. She was already like, fuck all y'all. But now, she gonna really show it. I wonder how she gonna show it, though, still being a member of Calvary. Mm. I don't know. But knowing Rochelle, she gonna pull it the fuck off. But y'all, that was Greenleaf. It gave what it gave. And yeah, same place, same time.